self-isolation continues. Museums, galleries and other attractions all over the world are closed. But that doesn't mean you can't visit some of the best experiences on the planet virtually. How would you like to view some of the world's most priceless art pieces up close or examine the giant skeletal remains of a T-Rex? Well, our virtual tour guide for the morning, Suzanne Kane, joins us now virtually, of course. Good morning, Suzanne. Lovely to see you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. I feel like I should have like an umbrella up and I have everybody with me. <laughs> have I everybody with me? Are we all on? <laughs> exactly. But um, kudos to all of these museums and galleries for being so proactive, Suzanne, and getting on the case and also allowing for people to enjoy what they have behind closed doors. So talk to us about some of the ones that you've come across. Dublin Zoo, of course, have been very vocal in promoting what they have on offer. Yeah, absolutely. So I think we could talk about these for ages this morning because there's so much across the world. So this is just a small select few that we're going to talk about this morning. But Dublin Zoo in our household is a huge favourite. Like it doesn't matter what the weather, we go to Dublin Zoo. Our kids absolutely love it. And they're genuinely missing actually going around and seeing the animals. And part of our seesaw, our junior infants work two weeks ago was to have a look at Dublin Zoo. And I didn't realise that they have a virtual tour and they have webcams. So you can pop on and you can go for a little virtual tour around the different parts of Dublin Zoo you get to see the animals really really up close like this one of the line I love where you get to see him having his dinner um, so like things like that you get to go really up close but also you can go on they have three different webcams so you can go to the African Plains and you can go and see the elephants and you can see the penguins and the great news in Dublin Zoo this week as well is that they've welcomed new penguin babies I don't know if that's their technical name you know but <laughs> they've new babies that are penguins in the zoo so you can see the penguins being fed at half past two the elephants are usually spotted around half past 10 and half past 12 so you get to really see the guys just kind of wandering around in their natural habitat and you get to feel the zoo there's loads of educational tools on there as well for parents to tell the kids if they can't read yet and then if the kids can read they'll find out more about what happens in Dublin Zoo and what the animals eat and their natural habitats and things like that so it's a really I think it's a really great one for the kids to get really involved in and just to remember like we have here in Ireland we have a brilliant zoo um, and all the hard work that the guys are doing in Dublin Zoo so that's a big favourite in our house. That's a good recommendation Suzanne you are yeah. a good tour guide though because you're bringing us to the American Natural History Museum in NYC <laughs> next. It could be a while before we're in New York, but this is absolutely incredible. This was founded in 1869 uh, and there's 45 permanent features and then obviously things move. But the two firm favourites this week that we've looked at in this house is the planetarium, which is absolutely incredible. You could honestly wander around for ages. Again, it works through apps and it works online. There's loads of educational tools there as well if you want to read them or give them to the kids. But the dinosaurs, if you have dinosaur fans in your house, mm -hmm. go to the American Museum um, of Natural History in New York because they, like, you can see them here. They're absolutely unbelievable. But it's funny, like, when you sit, especially if you're watching yourself, if you stick your headphones on, like I watched the other night, and you really feel immersed. Like, you feel like you're kind of there, and it's, it's very calming, actually. But if you have kids, especially kids who are, who are mad into dinosaurs, I can't recommend that enough. And the planetarium as well is really incredible. It looks absolutely brilliant, uh, Suzanne. What I love about our next virtual visit, this is to the National Gallery of Ireland, is that not only can you enjoy a virtual tour, but they also give you the option to view these tours in VR if you have the headset. That must be pretty yeah, spectacular. Absolutely. And actually, we'll see them a couple a couple of different places have VR. So if you have a Samsung VR or Google, you can do in the National Gallery of Ireland. Now, do you know what? I actually saw uh, some kids the other day talking, saying that they, they're going to miss their school tours. And one of the best school tours, maybe I was an absolute nerd, but one of the best school tours I ever had was we were taken to the National Gallery of Ireland. It is just magnificent. It's a really gorgeous place to go. And again, to wander around and see the incredible pieces of art that we have hanging in our galleries in Ireland. Um, it's really, really special. As I said, if you do have a VR for Samsung or Google VR, you can pop that on and have that real virtual all around 360 experience. But even if you don't, it's definitely worth going on. It's a great, you know, bank holiday weekend, a great time to pop around one of our galleries. So I'd highly advise that. The Battle of the Boyne was always my favourite because it felt like your teacher, I can still see my teacher stand and talk and us through it. So uh, yeah, that was always a good one for us, but it's a great, great place to go no matter what age you are. Suzanne, remind us of the ages of your children if they are engaged with oh, these yeah. things. Oh yes, so Hannah is three and Ushin is five. So Ushin is very much into it. Like he's, Hannah just kind of looks and goes, oh, 
whole dinosaur and she's kind of into that side of it but oh she was really really starting to immerse himself and the Dublin Zoo actually which was kind of um, the teacher had said this week for junior infants he was like oh my god the zoo the zoo and was all into it so yeah they're, they're across the ages but even just for me a nearly something year old and Joey my husband we're into it as well yeah of course it suits the whole family um, yeah. something else for art lovers the Louvre of course in Paris you can visit that on lockdown too Incredible. So this is just absolutely beautiful. Of course, the actual building itself, the architecture alone is incredible. Paris, like everywhere else, is shut down. So you can wander through. The Louvre is the largest art and antiques museum. That I'm going to drive it to the uh, to the Egyptian and this, the Egyptian antiques and this, because the details that you can see when you go in and wander around are absolutely incredible. But again, just, you know, if you're, this is for me, what I found the other day. I was pretty stressed the other day. I was feeling quite anxious. We're kind of going in to find out where we're going to be in lockdown. And I just kind of put on my head phones went on and looked at the Louvre and had to wander around and I actually calmed down it just felt like I had a little bit of space for me even though I was stuck at home <laughs> as we have all been for seven weeks with two small kids it's very calming and it's a beautiful place to go and visit something else that might calm the mind is looking at the sunset from the cliffs of Moher so they're in on the act as well tell us about that oh yeah again and again this gives you the total 360 view as well of the cliffs of Moher without the wind which I always think is a great one. Um, so, it, But it is a gorgeous place to go and have a little look around. Again, you can take it all in, the sunset in. And again, a beautiful, another one of our beautiful places in Ireland that maybe it's on the bucket list to do, but right now you're like, okay, where can I go to get a little bit of escapism? And this is just, ah, the, oh my God, the views are absolutely incredible from this. So that's a great one to go on to. And again, it's that full 360, you know, you capture every bit of it. That's a really good point, actually, about the weather, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. yeah. when you physically go to visit these places, the weather, it's completely yeah. weather dependent. Uh, one of my yeah. favourite places in the world, you're bringing us to it next, Suzanne, Central Park in New York. Yeah, so, and again, I think it's lots of honeymooners. I know lots of people due to get married. We went to New York on our honeymoon and Central Park was just one of my favourite places to go. Um, so this is, you go into West and, and 72nd, you go into Central Park and it takes you on a tour guide. My favourite part about this is that you can hear the audio of the tour guide. So they're going to talk you through the history of Central Park, what happened in Central Park. And I love the accent. It's like my favourite part of it because you kind of have this fully immersed feeling that you're in Central Park and you're wandering around and you're finding out what happens in Central park and you know what things like what was filmed there and why it was there and why monuments are there and it's a real immersion into new york you feel very much like you're there and um, it's, it's a wonderful little wander through new york and it takes in some of the most breathtaking sites of new york as well because obviously it is central park so it's surrounded by some iconic buildings as well so you wander over the bridges and around the paths and you feel like there's like there's people all around you it's a really really lovely one to do and actually, if you go to Central Park, uh, Central Park, you don't always see every single thing because it's enormous. So it would yeah, take days to, to explore your, it. You know, when you go on the carriage, we did the carriage. It's like, how much? All right, fine. Take my money. We're tourists. And you do, and you go around your loop for 25 minutes. And you're like, all oh, right, okay. Well, yeah. we'll go online then and have the proper tour. So much to explore. And from New York City to the UK, where you can, I believe, go on safari. Tell us about that. Yeah. So Longleat Safari Park is one of the most famous national parks over in the UK. So they've done a full virtual <coughs> tour around the park but it's narrated by you may know the BBC um, animal presenter who's Kate Humble mm. so she narrates it the whole way around the park so you get to see everything that they have in the park and again to talk about the conservation of animals um, and what's happening across the world and then they bring of course back down into the park again and you go down all the sideways but you see the animals so up close as you would do in a safari but again you get the educational side of it as well that you're finding out what's happening in the park and the work that the park are doing so it's a lovely one again Again, to just you know open the mind and have a little wander and try and get a little bit of escapism from where you are and what you're doing and again it's just kind of nice for the kids to me I'm just like if it passes 25 minutes I'm in cash me in I totally agree with you and we're going online Suzanne to to get our news and our information and indeed for children's homework so this is escapism for the whole family I suppose well done a really nice list there Suzanne and as I said, look, that's a tiny, tiny list. We were saying this the other day when we were looking at, you could go anywhere. Like there's Disneyland is there. You can have a wander around Disneyland. There's so much stuff online. So once you start to kind of find these, more and more and more, you're going to find loads of stuff. Like you can pop down to Tato Park as well. They have virtual tours online. Teeling take you around. Teeling take you around their distillery. There's absolutely loads out there. So go and if you need, and especially for yourself, if you need a little bit of escapism, just to feel like everything isn't on top of you, it's a lovely place to do as well. Because you can do for Suzanne, thanks so much for joining us this morning. We look forward to seeing Thank you again you. soon. Thanks, Susie.